Muchísimas gracias por tu presentación, Miquela. Los invitamos a bajar del escenario. Muchas gracias. Ahora daremos continuidad a nuestra reunión con los representantes de la IANA, del LASO y del NRO. Para iniciar esta segunda parte, invitamos al escenario a Kim Davis en representación de la IANA. La IANA es la autoridad de números asignados de Internet. Es responsable de distribuir parte del espacio global de direcciones IP y números del sistema autónomo a los registros regionales. Es responsable también de gestionar todos los demás registros de identificadores necesarios para el funcionamiento de los protocolos de Internet. Welcome, Kim. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to share the IANA update with you today. Uh, for those that um, are not familiar with our operations, we tend to divide uh, what we do into three categories, protocol parameters, domain names, and number resources. This presentation will just focus on the number resource aspect that I, I know is of interest to you. Uh, this is the INA team uh, that works for us at the moment. Those that have interacted with us will find some of these names very familiar. There's currently 17 of us, predominantly based in Los Angeles, um, but providing service throughout the world. I wanted to give you an update on uh, customer satisfaction. Uh, we recently conducted our annual customer satisfaction survey. Um, this annual survey is sent to all of our customers through our different customer groups. As it pertains to number resource performance, we send it to the RAR CEOs and the registration service managers of the RARs. Uh, this year, the participation rate um, from the area, uh, from this community was 25%, approximately 10% uh, lower than the previous year's average. That being said, it's a fairly small uh, sample group, so I wouldn't read too much into it. Um, with respect to satisfaction, we received a 100% satisfaction rating, um, which is consistent with uh, the numbering community in previous years. Um, and all five of the respondents indicated that they did not have any issues with our performance in the prior year. Um, every time we do the survey, we ask the respondents to rate um, what we should prioritize. And once again, um, accuracy and timeliness were um, identified as the key areas that we should be focusing on in performing the functions. Um, one thing that is new that I'll talk about in a moment um, is we're migrating to a new model, um, whereas right now we poll our customers once a year on how we're doing. We're going to move to a model where after every interaction we have with a customer, we, we seek their opinion, and the, the goal there is to really get more timely and actionable advice from our customers. Um, in terms of um, overall satisfaction um, across all of our different groups, 96% uh, of the respondents were either satisfied or very satisfied. Um, these responses are actually the highest we've ever received, um, so we're quite gratified by that. Uh, I won't go into the numbers due to time, but um, all the details are available on our website. Uh, so I mentioned that we're going to move to doing surveys um, directly after an interaction. Uh, we've built a set of tools to do this that we, we informally call uh, How Do We Do? Um, you'd be very familiar with this model. Um, it's very common with a variety of businesses and operations these days, which is that once we've completed a request, uh, we would then send a follow-up survey that's just a, a very simple question um, asking you to comment on whether you had good or bad service. And in the event that you have any follow-up questions or issues, you can identify them and bring them to our attention. Uh, we only send one survey um, every 60 days, and customers that are not interested in them can opt out permanently. Um, okay, moving on. Um, so we do uh, report on uh, SLAs as well uh, for the numbering community. We produce a monthly report um, that uh, testifies to our adherence to a set of SLAs that were agreed between ICANN and the various RIRs. Um, they're available on our website. You can find them at iana.org slash performance. Um, we've met all of our SLAs uh, in the previous year. 
Um, auditing is a very big part of the culture of our organization, so I wanted to bring this to your attention. Uh, we just recently concluded our 2018 audit uh, period um, and issued audit reports um, and findings. Um, in particular, we have one audit that is performed against the SOC 2 framework on what we call the registry assignment and maintenance systems. Now, these are the, the key systems that we use to do our job. Uh, we have a third party auditor come in and audit the controls we have around those systems. And we have particular um, controls that relate to the numbering functions. Um, the 2018 report was issued with no exceptions. We shared that with the uh, NRO um, EC. Uh, and we've recently kicked off our 2019 audit program. Um, one thing that's changed this year is the, the framework we use has changed a little bit. It's actually more expanded. So we're implementing that uh, into our audit processes. One thing that we're building uh, in terms of product uh, is a new dashboard for RIR allocations. Um, Historically, we've used a, a fairly informal website that was operated by the research department of ICANN to do things like assess the amount of depletion of um, number resources that is then informs the policy that we implement. Um, that website was, was a bit archaic um, and it was falling into disrepair. Um, so we're building something new that is fit for purpose for what we use it for. And this will be on the IANA website. And the idea here is to have a very specific and targeted presentation of all the variables that go into implementation of the global policies for number resources. So you'll be able to go there and at a glance see the amount of utilization of number resources by the various RIRs. You can see the applicability of our policies. You can see projections forward as to when we think we will make our next allocation of various different number resource types. Um, so this will be available soon. We have it prototyped and we're just going through the sort of testing process right now. Uh, here's some of the things I mentioned. For IPv6, um, you'll find that there's a state of the various area allocation pools. Um, the number and growth of IPv6 addresses in various regions. Um, and some of the functionality that was there that doesn't actually pertain to our policy is being removed. Um, things like allocation by country and so forth. Uh, similarly, we have um, targeted um, allocation data for AS numbers. And you might be wondering what's missing there. Well, of course, there's IPv4, uh, and I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, but speaking of IPv6 for a moment, um, some activity that we've made since we last met is we made a um, slash 22 allocation to RIPE NCC in uh, March. Um, and the goal here was to um, allocate a block that met with the specific request of RIPE NCC. Uh, for those that are very familiar with the global allocation policy, you'll be aware that where um, we issue slash 12s for IPv6 allocations. However, in this instance, there was a specific gap in a legacy allocation that was previously unallocated and RIPE had requested that we fill that gap first. Um, and then after consultation with the NRO EC, we agreed it would be a, an applicable um, exercise um, of the policy to allocate just a slash 22 to fill that gap. IPv4 allocation, uh, the story is essentially um, our resources are now depleted um, as of a couple of months ago. Um, we've had in operation for several years now a recovered pool allocation system where uh, the small amount of IPv4 um, ranges that we had available um, that had been returned to us were then divided uh, across the five RARs in an equitable fashion. And every six months we'd make an allocation on that basis. So you can see on the, on the graphic that the allocations have dwindled and dwindled and dwindled. Uh, we made an allocation of two slash 24s to every RAR in March. And the result of that is we now only have three slash 24s left, which can't be divided into five, um, and thus ends this policy unless um, by some um, forces, uh, some further IPv4 is returned to IANA. One thing that is brand new that was just implemented this week, um, the NRO reached out to us and asked, can we um, refactor the AS number registry to remove some blocks that were allocated um, in inter-RAR transfers uh, in the early years 
um, of the operation of that registry. Uh, and after a discussion with them, we agreed to do this and we've recently implemented this. Um, in essence, um, this brings the practices of the AS registry in line with um, the, the IPv4 and IPv6 registries, which have the same approach. Um, if you go to then to the, the sort of governing um, RAR, they will then um, provide a referral to the other RAR if it has been transferred. And that's it. Thank you very much for uh, allowing me to give you an update. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much for the presentation, Kim. Continuamos con las presentaciones de hoy invitando a Ricardo Patari y a Jorge Villa para contarnos de lazo.